Well, presenters, welcome back. Coach Tom here solving basketball, exposing NBA's biggest inefficiency. Michael McElvey, never seen a video of his. Thought it was a thinking basketball thing, but uh, let's watch. Maybe we can learn something together. I'll give you my reaction, my own breakdown. So I have a strange question to start with, actually, today. Um, do you I had think a joker thumbnail. Basketball. Game time. Has been solved. Basketball has been solved. Humans can't we're solve themselves. Take or debate full of people talking in absolute. There's nothing that you would just assume that the game has been solved. As the analytics say it's just now a question of, well, talent and execution. That's it. You can't do it without stars. I'm going to show you why the game will actually never be solved, even if there is an equation for it. It's the game can be solved. The people can't. That pe the people that play the game can't be solved. Definitely not that one. This is the never-ending pursuit of, people. of solving basketball. Every single strategy or system was once unknown and unexpected. A crossover was quite literally a secret. But many people act as if there are no more secrets to be found, even though this is mathematically impossible. To understand this, we need to take a look at a scientific example that has captivated the world for decades. I love the perpetual motion this machines. This is a special little desktop toy that explains a lot more than its simple structure. And what you'll notice, even as I attempt to drop it at the same place each time, its path deviates significantly, rather quickly. Tiny little differences lead to disproportionately large differences in outcomes, even for this simplistic toy. What does that have to do with basketball? <laughs> the players play the game, man. There's five players. Every single player you have on the court changes the spacing, the dynamic, the passing, the attitudes, the personalities. And that's just your own team. You have five other people, not to mention coaches who influence the game, thousands of fans that influence the game, and the ones that actually influence the game the most, not the players. The three referees. This is the referees are in charge, not the players. Can be found everywhere, certainly in basketball. Doink. D Wade. This can be found Doink. in any sport or business, and where there is chaos, James. there is market inefficiency, and that means opportunity. Players and coaches making more or less than they should. GMs making poor draft decisions. Michael Lewis Brown, the goat. wrote about this in Moneyball, the Oakland Athletics, went after players that just got on base more frequently. They were termed to be undervalued. And the result was the team won a lot. Most importantly, I've done a lot of investing, speculating, scalping, trading, um, analyzing. It's a people business, even the stock market, gambling. It's all people business. People just play with money. With not a lot. Of money. It's a people this business. This is a contestable book about baseball. Where might the inefficiencies exist in basketball? The opportunity. Fortunately, we have an aid in this exploration. Evolution. Basketball has become a global game. And the spread has produced varying playing styles. In my last video... The, the referees are different. The rules are different. Same, same ball. I discussed Completely one different games. difference at the international level. Ball movements, specifically reversals. Team USA and Team Canada passed on passing. They rank dead last in the tournament for top 25 teams. Now, most of these Canadian players grew up in the States, either in the familiar AAU circuit or high school. Dribbling the least valuable skill in basketball. In the same way passing the most as important. These USA players. Um, so, is this mostly a byproduct of that AAU upbringing? That's an actual thumbnail of third graders, um, or is this more of an influence of their time in the NBA? Either way, these losses highlighted a potential inefficiency. Although Canadian and U.S. players are Comes significantly, media. and I mean significantly more valuable based upon pay, both teams lost twice. Brazil doesn't have a single NBA player, and Serbia, with just two NBA players at the time, was walloping Team Canada without a guy named... Jokic, 
How could this happen? How could Serbia, who has less people than the state of Washington, where I live, be pummeling the talent-rich Canadians? This Selection. Has to mean one or some combination of the following three things. All four losses were flukes. These international players are undervalued. These wildly talented North American NBA heavy teams are playing in a less efficient way. Oh my God, there, there's, there could be a lot more reasons than three, but sure. Well, with hindsight, we already know that all three of these things have happened. Um, the teams have way more pride. They've been playing together. They have chemistry. Um, there's more at stake. Some people, they go to Canada just to play in the Olympics. Serbians, they might be a little bit more proud. They grew up in a harsher environment they're used to a more rowdy crowd um, i think this is an american bias just thinking americans are great pass teams have been upset in not true man not when it comes to business or sports it's teams have played in inefficient ways it's but real four losses is a lot to be a fluke with so few games so either these international players are undervalued and or these nba players are playing in a less efficient way under marketed Perhaps the greatest modern NBA dynasty was built upon this framework. Ginobili, 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 Ginobili. Discovery. Ginobili. Chaos. Popovich went where other coaches and GMs had it overseas. Obviously, no title team or dynasty completely evades good luck. The Spurs did get the number one overall pick. That ended up being Tim Duncan. He was pretty good. But clearly, Popovich saw something that other. In order to win at the highest, highest levels, you cannot think with the pack. It's called divergent thinking. Everybody converges on the same way. They want to play the same way. When you diverge and then your strategy is proven correct, you win it all. The game changes with divergent thinkers. It, it's happened over and over. Um, it used to be, uh, I don't know, a bunch of white guys passing it. And then all of a sudden this big old black 6'8 uh, Magic Johnson takes over. And then after Magic Johnson, uh, who takes over? I don't know. Big big guys, Hakeem Olajuwon, Shaq. And after <coughs> after they get tired of uh, dealing with Shaq, you get uh, Steve Nash and and little guards trying to take over. And then you get a big European, Dirk Nowitzki. And then he proves another thing. And then it goes from uh, you got to play inside out to a little dude named Steph Curry. And then uh, you get this freak of nature, LeBron James, just running through everybody. And you you build around LeBron. And uh, now we're in the uh, three, jack up every three era. So the game is still a basketball. It's still putting it through the hoop, but the strategies have evolved and uh, the people have evolved and uh, how they enforce the stuff. Because uh, if Shaq was playing right now, he'd destroy everybody, period. GMs and coaches didn't in these international players. The Spurs drafted, acquired, and started more international players than any other NBA team over a period of time. But how much of this winning could be attributed to coaching and how much of this winning could be attributed to a certain type of international style in player? Oh, you know me? Examine this. I wanted to look at Spurs players who played for multiple teams. Spurs not named Duncan Parker or Ginobili. Less celebrated Spurs. The Spurs To system. see if any patterns emerged. A quasi-controlled experiment. For example, a guy like Boris Diaw, a journeyman who played for five NBA teams, how did his time with the Spurs compare to his time with these other teams? Well, of the 74 it's all about players, the fit, man. 49 of them had a higher effective field goal percentage than their career average with the Spurs, and 39 of them had their best shooting year ever with the Spurs. So to anyone that watches basketball, this makes sense. The Spurs system created better opportunities for guys to score Belly and they Belly. get a higher percentage of their shots. But this Step doesn't really Jack. answer our key question here. Does this have to do more with the Spurs getting the right guys, the international players that are undervalued, or is this more of a testament to the Spurs system? It's impossible to know the makeup of that answer right now, but either way, that highlighted a colossal inefficiency. The Spurs won a lot with a lot less money. San Antonio is back on top once again. The Spurs. Going Miami. The, the flaw is thinking that money controls everything. Uh, once you have a certain level of money, you don't actually really care for more money. And just 
So a lot of these guys, they, they make money, they make money for their family. And then there's some guys that actually care to play and care to win and care to compete. Other guys just play basketball for a paycheck. So it's just like any other job. Like diehards, like, like, I don't know, basketball players, they think you, you got to love basketball to play basketball. No, you could just be tall and really athletic and be reasonably good. And you can make a lot of money doing it. Why not do it if you can? If you don't love it, you don't love it. It's not your thing. It's just a job. Buying titles is hard enough. As the Nets, Knicks, Suns, Clippers, Nets again, and Knicks, well, more than any other team by far, have proved. But winning with half the payroll, any NBA owner would want that. So why are more NBA teams doing this? This is entertainment. Yeah, the people want to be entertained. We need to put butts in the seats, so we need star power. The NBA is like any entertainment business. It will only make money if it is entertaining. And they don't hide this either. All of this would suggest that the incentive for each NBA team would be to fixate on the stars in the show. But this neglects what people love, especially Americans, more than anything. It's Lillard. He got the shot off. Winning. Oh, no, man. People don't really care to win too much. The representation of this aligned interest is the Golden State Warriors, who ascended from a below average valuation to the number one most valuable NBA team. So much player just movement. Just a matter of a few years. Steph Curry, the man in the arena during this ascension, was popular before all of this. But he became one of the most recognizable human beings on the planet after he gave the people what they wanted. Winning. Lots of it. Over the Golden State Warriors return to a familiar place. They're on top of the NBA world. The fourth title in eight. Can make a lot of money without winning. The Clippers. Playoff ticket sales. Each round more money. Regular season ticket sales and ticket prices. Larger TV deals. And of course, winning helps create stars. Stars that create a feedback loop of sorts of what I just listed, along with a gravity to attract other stars. Stars that only improve the valuation of a team. I mean, just imagine for a moment that you're in the owner's shoes. What is the clearest way to make money? What is the clearest way to make less money? So assuming that NBA owners and franchises are more worried about entertaining than winning, would go against all the historic economic evidence and incentives here. Winning pays. And winning helps create valuable stars. But this does not mean that... Winning, winning doesn't pay because you pay overpay the really, really highly talented people. If you divvied up all the money, made all their paychecks split evenly amongst the 300 players in the NBA, um, if you're a 30th ranked team, you get 30th ranked dollars. If you were the first ranked team, you get the most amount of dollars, kind of like a poker tournament. I guarantee you players would play differently. Teams would play differently. But it's an individual contract on a quote-unquote team. Owners, GMs, and coaches always pursue winning in the best way. Far from it. We know that the Warriors' rise can be largely attributed to the discovery of an oversight and inefficiency. This time some advanced calculus. Oh. My. God. No, they got Other lucky with a coach, Mark Jackson, on, who so let... Why Steph Curry seen this go crazy. He believed in is Steph Curry and he, he just let a thing of the past, Curry and Clay Thompson go crazy. In today's modern NBA game. And then Steve Kerr please, took him over the top. Please subscribe if you like. Mark Jackson deserves a lot of credit. Returning to our FIBA tournament, think for just a moment. What is ball movement or reversals inexplicably linked to? Coaching. Coaching that, as many fans are quick to point out, is... Uh, Seemingly non-existent at times in the NBA. But there's more to this. Consider the following statement. Before the 2023 season concluded, three of the last four NBA head coaches to win a title have been fired. Mike Budenholzer and the Bucks won the championship in 2021. And in 2022, the, players are more important the Bucks lost in the second the round without their second best player. Chris Middleton. Because you can't fire players, I mean, but you can Bucks fire coaches. Really good. They won the most regular season games in the NBA. But against Miami, Giannis, pretty important player, missed two and a half games and played hurt in the opening round. And they came up short to what would prove to be a finals-bound, very good Heat team. And the Bucks wasted no time in firing their entire coaching staff. Similar stories can be easily found. Now, 
Coaches get fired all the time. There are obviously bad coaches, but how is it that a coach can be valuable? What is it that they can do? Well, one of the things they can do is implement an offensive and defensive system, and coaches need to have some combination of authority and respect to do that. So or draft why LeBron don't you just and examine let an LeBron NBA do everything. Authority, uh, or leash. If at any point you upset a star, your job is in jeopardy. If your team shows any signs of stepping back, your job is in jeopardy. He if your team you gets not. hurt, your job is in jeopardy. Even if your team won more games than any other team that season and you were named the coach of the year the prior season, you just had playoff injuries, uh, your job is in jeopardy. I love that. The He's firings on. of Bud and Monty and many other good NBA head coaches <laughs> is emblematic of an underlying inefficiency in the NBA. Uh, coaches can't really coach. I mean, how can we criticize NBA head coaches for not instituting a system if, well, players and GMs can just completely undermine even what it means to be a coach, undermine any power that a coach seemingly would have in a normal situation? This is a systemic inefficiency, but simultaneously, it is an opportunity. There appear to be three markets where a player's ego or personal desires will not trump. What is this video talking about? San Antonio, Golden State, and Miami. I find the Miami example particularly interesting. It's easy to forget the back and forth heat years after LeBron left, in and out of the playoffs, yet Spolstra wasn't fired. It would have been an easy story for Pat Riley to tell, perhaps the easiest there ever was. We only won because LeBron, yeah, D Wade. LeBron James. Too. But Riley had a unique patience for a GM, and Spolstra went on to construct and implement a system with seemingly less talented, less valued guys overachieving their way into two finals runs. Unquestionably, Eric Spolstra is allowed to coach. He has no fear of checking even his best players, but this is the exception. It is not the rule. The rule appears to be, well, back to our board. Teams appear to be terrified of letting a coach coach because it might just upset a player, but across the pond, an alternate reality has evolved. My fucking just watch a game and you'll see it. The coaches retain much more respect, allowing the ability to implement a system, allowing the ability to showcase the importance of a coach. Now, I want to be clear here that I'm not Americans. just advocating to allow some coach to just scream and yell. Uh, but there's a reason why coaches, coaches should have exist. To scream, yeah. There's a Sometimes reason why to. that type of person even, that role exists in many different domains outside of sports. But here's where I stumbled into yet another surprising discovery. See, most fans are aware that FIBA and international rules allow for a more defensive game. It's more advantageous to the defense because of these rule differences. And this is true, but when we look at perhaps the most telling offensive statistic, points per possession. The rules really aren't that different. It's the officiating. The officiating. Who enforces the rules? Are they going to call a travel? Are they going to call a carry? Are they calling illegal screens? The Are they calling block charges? How much physicality is let go? EuroLeague teams are actually more efficient than NBA teams. So is this solely because the three-point line is closer at the top of the arc? Um, I find that difficult to buy, and here's why. When comparing possession length, the average EuroLeague possession is three seconds longer, a 21% difference. This suggests that EuroLeague teams are more patient in their shot selection. And also, shooting accuracy doesn't fall, as you might think, between 22 and a half and 24 feet. Point being, Euroleague teams are scoring at a higher rate despite these defensive advantages. This is perhaps the greatest inefficiency in the NBA, one that many more NBA teams should consider exploring, especially the first in transition, fourth in cutting, 23rd in isolation, 32 in pick and roll. Um, move the ball. Passing is the most important thing. I said it at the beginning of this video. Portland's, Orlando's, Charlotte's, those smaller market teams. Get rid of your isolation. Involve more guys at the same time. It's harder to guard a lot of moving things than a lot of non-moving things. Guys just standing in the corner. That are just going to continue to struggle to attract top free Asian talent. It's a way to win more with less. 
San Antonio has never been a big market. And they Return did okay, to the Alamo. Perhaps this was given a chance because it was somewhat of an anomaly. Uh, the GM at the time, Popovich, was certainly on board with the new head coach, Popovich. He hired himself. And this level of executive buy-in appears to be a rarity in today's NBA market. Instead, GMs and owners chase talent along with their present bias to the extreme, as evidenced by another inefficiency, draft picks. Perhaps there's a fear that a systematic coach would just push away star players. NBA players wouldn't be able to handle that type of system. But here's a clip from Draymond that kind of contradicts this. Steve came in. I'm watching Steph Curry going to mixing someone. He's like, pass the ball, pass the ball. I'm like, yo. And sure enough, as we bought into the system that he was bringing to it, it always found the guys that it needed to find, which is where I learned the power of the swing pass. Now, you tend to get that level of buying the coaching staff when you start winning. Obviously, the Golden State Warriors won a lot, but I think there would be plenty of NBA players that would be open to a more systematic approach. Maybe not all of them, but enough to field a very good team, enough to win more with less. Oh, if you don't like that, you don't like Kings basketball. Obviously, Obviously there like are that. bad you coaches like that should basketball. be fired and implementing an it's orchestra so like the offense. The penetration That's to and the finish. But these are multi-billion dollar organizations that are signing coaches to multi-million dollar contracts to do jobs that they can't even do. And if that isn't a systemic inefficiency, I guess I'm not really sure what is. Within the nebula of chaos, small, seemingly insignificant changes can compound into radically different results. And that's true not just in basketball, but in life. In a potentially infinite cosmos, there are an infinite number of secrets to be found. Letting an NBA coach do his job might be one of them. Hope you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you haven't. I have no idea what the hell he solved. I don't even know what the problem was. Holy crap. Sorry, you guys. I mean, if you enjoyed it, I definitely didn't. There were some some cool graphics. Uh, good thumbnail, good title. That's why I clicked on it. And um, I thought I was thinking basketball. But uh, solving the games. NBA's biggest inefficiency. I have no idea what the hell it means. But... Now you got now you got more a taste of uh what my opinions are on the game. Until next video, take 14 minutes 24 seconds or 1% your day to get better. Peace.